I'm here today at the Philosophy and Aesthetics Conference in Manchester for Gilles Deleuze 2012 and I'm here to talk to Dr David Martin-Jones about his new internet site DeleuzeCinema.com. David Martin-Jones is the Senior Lecturer at Film Studies at the University of St Andrews. His specialism is film philosophy and his research engages with world cinema. He's the author of Gilles Deleuze, Cinema and National Identity, 2006, Deleuze's Reframe, 2008, He's done books on Scotland's global cinema from 2009 and Deleuze and World Cinema 2011. Um, and he's co-editor of a couple of books, Cinema at the Periphery 2010 and most recently, which will come out very soon, Deleuze and Film. David, could you tell me a bit about the website? What is it and what's it for? Thanks very much for that lovely introduction. Um, the website is called DeleuzeCinema.com and it's a database that I set up with some of my PhD students at the University of St Andrews, uh, some current and one or two who have now um, completed and have moved on. And it's a database containing two types of information. Um, all the information relates to Deleuze and cinema, Deleuze cinema, television, visual media, but it's, it's very specific, it's not just about Deleuze or Deleuze and guitar, it's about Deleuze and cinema and two types of information. First of all, scholars all around the world who are working on this interface between Deleuze and cinema and indeed visual media, uh, computer games, television and so on, the scholars and then the publications. And it's a database that you can use in two ways. Firstly, you can simply browse the pages and have a look and you'll see we put up the names of the scholars and also where they are in the world. So if you want to look, for example, who does uh, work on the lesson cinema in the country I'm in or the country I'm going to. Um, so you can browse, but also um, you can search. So it's, it's got a sort of search feature on the very front page and you simply type in your keywords and it should give you quite a good breakdown of the works in which the, the particular item you're looking for uh, has already been discussed. Okay, so if you're looking for a certain scholar doing certain work on a certain topic, you can put in some keyword searches and it'll bring up some matches for that, is that what you're saying? Exactly, you could do it like that. You could certainly look for a scholar, say if you want to look for Elaine Del Rio, what's Elaine Del Rio written? Uh, you could put her name in and you'll come up with her book and her articles. Or you could say, simply think, well, I, I'd like to look at the impulse image. and I want to know who's written about that and put that in and it, it should pop up as long as everyone's put all the right keywords in, yeah, of course. So why did you set it up? Uh, what prompted you to do this? Uh, this is the question that I like a lot because it's my chance to talk about myself. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I noticed two things and I kept noticing them over several years and I really wanted to do something about it. And the first one was this, I would go to a lot of conferences, film philosophy, Deleuze studies and so on, and because I'm a Deleuze Cinema person, I'd be given the job of chairing a panel. Was it Deleuze Cinema panel, David? Off you go. And that was very enjoyable. But what I kept noticing was, uh, when people came to Deleuze and Cinema for the first time, they would stick with the primary text and engage with that. And after a while, it felt as though we were reinventing the wheel, over and over again reinventing the wheel. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if uh, there was somewhere where people could go and have a look and see what had already been written on the things they're interested in so that they could take a big step forward much, much more quickly and uh, the field would, would move ahead. More so you're quickly. looking to, if you like, spur on the dialogues with the books? Yes, I thought so. Um, to give everyone a chance to, to engage with what's already there so that they can then develop their own work on top of that. Uh, so that was one primary driver was um, to kind of stop us taking this half step back each time. But the second one was, um, it became more obvious when I went to different countries that there was a lot of research going on with Deleuze and cinema, but it wasn't always obvious to people in different countries what was being done elsewhere. And I really wanted to try and set up some way of facilitating greater communication, aside from, you know... So surfacing, in other words, surfacing the work that's out there. Yes, I suppose so, yes. Um, partly, I thought it was because... In some countries you won't find, for example, discipline like film studies. So people will be working without a supervisor who's immersed in that field, who's not necessarily aware of all the books that are there. Um, and so people are trying to find out what's there, and perhaps also they don't have the same library facilities mm. that you get in somewhere like the UK or the USA and other countries, but perhaps it's not always the same everywhere. 
and so people are keen to read what's there but perhaps don't know what it is so I just simply needed a big place to list things. Okay and how do these lists occur? How do, how do we get these lists? Well that's a good question. The, um, we set up the site and I have to give a big uh, plug to Matthew Holtmeyer who did really all the technological work. Um, so we put a lot of labour into this, but with the money we raised uh, to do it, we could only get so far. We managed to put in about 400 entries of scholars and publications, and then we, we had no more money. We'd spent several days just sitting in a room intensely with five or six people just entering data. Um, and we said, right, at this point we have to open this out. So it's for the international community to use this how they would like to do now. It is like a wiki. You put data in, and we'd be delighted if people um, would just put in data about themselves, uh, the publications that they're working on, things that have, have been published, so that, um, so that really the community can drive this forward. Oh, that's really good. So what have you learned from doing this? It's still quite recent, this, isn't it, as we talk? Yeah, yeah it is. Um, we launched it right at the beginning of February 2012. And the, the major lesson we had when we did it, and the reason why um, we had to kind of say, this is as much as we can do, now it's for everyone else to complete it. Um, we just found there was so much material. So really, this has already done one thing that it's proved one of its aims. We knew, people in film studies and people working with Deleuze and Cinema and, and Deleuze studies and other places, we knew how much work there was. But yes, on occasion we would be told that it was really a very small thing and not really having much of an impact. Now we know there is. We already knew there were over 20 books just on you know, Deleuze and Cinema in some mm. kind of very direct way. But now we see how ubiquitous the use of Deleuze is. Use of Deleuze to look at um, some concepts from Deleuze appear in a book on and Argentine cinema, some appear and work on Hong Kong cinema. Really this is going on all over the world. So it's already proved the point that we have this critical mass, but now I think we just need to keep on expanding so that people can keep aware of what's going on. Okay, so what do you think, so yeah, that's what you've learned from doing it, mm. um, and we know now what you want to take it forward, you want people to contribute, <clears throat> but what do you think its impact has been so far at this point, so soon after it being launched? Well, about a month in, we did some preliminary metrics. And what we could tell at that point was, I try and do as much of this as I can from memory, we'd had users from over 60 countries already at that point. We'd had over a thousand unique visitors and at least 500 had become repeat visitors. So we knew that there was a community out there that was using it. I think at that point, over 75% of the use was from non-UK people. And if we take the USA out, which is probably always going to be the biggest market or place where people use it, if we take the US out, we're down to still over 50% of users are non-UK and US. So that was a real surprise and, and mm -hmm. fantastic news. We thought that the UK, the USA and Canada would be our top uh, users, and they are. But we didn't expect, we actually thought next would probably be Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it wasn't. We didn't expect it. Brazil and Spain are the next, which was just fantastic to find out. And very interesting as well, I'm not really sure what to conclude from that yet, but we know there are several monographs on Deleuze and Cinema written by French scholars, for example, but France is not up there at that point. Um, what we can make from this yet, it's too early to tell, but we know we have users from many countries, people are posting content from Iran, from Germany, from Australia, from the, uh, the US and so on. So it is showing that this international community is there. The second uh, most frequent language uh, user is Spanish. We already know that, so we have English and then Spanish. Um, one of the things we really wanted to do, and this was really important for us, and we spent a lot of time getting translations, we have a, a scrolling banner. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah. We've got over 15 languages, maybe more like 20 at the time that I'm talking now, and we'd be delighted to hear from anyone else who wants to um, send in a little translation that we can put on there. <coughs> Brilliant. You've Heard that here. Um, so, how would you like the database to be used? What, what, how would you see it being used going forward? You've already mentioned that you want people to use it to, you know, locate scholarship 
um, to, to, to push the dialogue forward so we're not retreading old ground, but I'm sure you would welcome people reinvestigating claims. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But how do you like this database to be used going forwards? Well, we just want as many people as we can uh, to get to use it um, from as many countries around the world, and I think that's really the key. What we can do with this is keep connected internationally and as Deleuze and Cinema continues to grow in the places that we know it's already established, the UK, the USA, Australia, so on, and obviously apparently Brazil and, and Spain, but also the places that are going to emerge, I'm sure, with an interest, perhaps places like China, um, we can also keep that international community talking to each other and this will really help us expand on, in particular, the cinema books and the different ways in which we can think about how they can be used and how people are using these concepts. Yeah, it's interesting you say China because there's obviously a conference in China or Deleuze, right. you know, exactly. Um, will you be promoting this there? I shall be shamelessly promoting it yeah, there. Good. Have you got Thanks. flyers and everything like oh, that? Flyers is a good idea. Oh, Let's get some flyers. <laughs> okay, so I suppose, how would you see this developing in the future? Is there anything else you want to do with it? If you get more money, I guess? Hmm. Well, it's a good question. I mean, when we first started it, the one thing we thought about doing was, can we post all this work online? And um, we didn't see a way we could do it because of copyright reasons, and I don't think we can. So we have a database instead. Maybe this database has done what it set out to do, which was to show that there is a lot of work and that there's an international community and to keep those people linked and aware of what's going on. Maybe there's a phase two. We are talking about it, the editorial collective is talking about it, but what that is, well, who knows? Okay, well, um, maybe when you know, we can do another one. <laughs> yes, that'd be good. <laughs> so um, I remember um, getting the email when you launched um, and um, being very busy and thinking to myself, I'll get around looking at it. I'm not so busy now, David, so okay. I'm thinking about joining up and becoming part of the community. Um, how do I do that? How, how does anybody out there become part of the community? What, what steps do they have to go through? Right, it's a two-step process, but it's very simple. Um, and if anyone's not sure how to do it, there's actually a page called How To. And oh, you just okay. click on How To and you can see. But it's a two-step. One is where it says username and password, you just register your username and password. But that is not enough. You have to also use the contact form to contact Matthew Holtmeyer and say, this is the username and password I've set up so that he can recognise that we're not looking at automated robotic um, sign-ups. We're looking right, at okay. people who are actually invested. Uh, so once you've done that, that's fine. But of course the database is open for anyone to use. It's open access. You don't have to be a user. You can just search it. So it's really could be used by anyone. So if I, I become a user, if I want to if update want my to profile, post. and can I post on behalf of other, other people? You can you post. Can, uh, these are some interesting things I've yes. come across. And you can really post what you like, and we welcome posts in every language. Um, we don't want it to just, just to be English, in fact. Um, we'll try and monitor and track so that it is just, you know, Deleuze and Cinema and people aren't posting things that are not, uh, not specific. But, no, okay. but typically, yes, we'd be delighted if people would post on it. Uh, about themselves, about other people. Brilliant. Okay, David, thanks very much for letting us know about this and uh, good luck with the future of the site and uh, let's see how it goes from there. Yeah, you should register. Oh, I'm going to be doing that. I'll go now. <laughs>